Hey, welcome back to the Within Yoga channel. I'm Sarah and this is a chaturanga flow for beginners. So we're gonna work through a lot of shoulder strength. We're gonna work on that chaturanga motion, which comes up quite a lot in a vinyasa class. Before we get going, I do recommend bricks if you have them, just because we're gonna use them as a guide quite a lot in this class. So let's come into a child's pose to begin. Big toes tucked, bum to heels. Forehead to your hands. And we can make a little pillow here, head and hands. Slowing everything down and calming everything down. It's nice to start our yoga practice with just a moment of stillness. Tuning into our breath, because when the practice starts to get a bit more dynamic, maybe a bit more spicy, we remember what it's like to be calm, and we remember that our breath is the tool that helps keep us calm. So take a deep breath in. Release. Breathe in through the nose. Breathe out through the nose. In through the nose. Out through the nose. Slowly, when you're ready, rise up into all fours, hands down. Palms are flat to the floor. Fingers are spread, not too wide, but just enough so you can feel like you can grip the floor, but you're giving yourself a solid base. And when your hands are on the ground, it kind of doesn't matter whatever the pose, whether it be plank, chaturanga, downward dog, you want to have this almost clawing action, this gripping action of the floor. And we slowly start to lean forward, warming up our wrists. And we lean back. So when, we're gonna do this a few more times. When people start doing yoga, the thing that they often say is their wrists can really feel it. And that's because we're not used to taking that much body weight in our wrists, not at the beginning, it comes with time. So keep rocking forward and back. And that's why it's good and important to spend the time just warming up, getting them ready, testing our edge. So start to lean forward a little bit more. And lean back, nice. Now we're gonna flip the hands so the fingers face from side to side and we lean to the right. Center, lean to the left. Center and right. Center and left. Center, right. And center, left, good. Left fingertips point forward. We're gonna do this one hand at a time. Right fingertips point back towards your right knee. I like to tuck my toes here and then gently edge your hips backwards. I do recommend bending your right elbow just to touch, especially if you're very flexible. Breathing in, breathing out. And then slowly release by coming forward, flip the right hand, left hand comes back, gentle bend through the left elbow and we edge our hips backwards. Amazing, and then slowly fingertips point forward. Now we're gonna get the back of the hands to the floor. Fingertips point in towards one another, and this should actually feel like a nice release after all of the actions that we've done so far. Lean to the right to stretch through the left. Center, lean to the left to stretch through the right. Center, lean to the right. Center, lean to the left. Amazing, let's sit our bum back towards our heels, shaking it all out. Nice. Now come back into all fours, shoulders over wrists, hips over knees. This is a cat cow, so on your inhale, arch the back, pull your heart forward, lift the chest. Exhale, round the spine, push the floor away so you're separating your shoulder blades. Inhale, bringing some movement, some warmth into the spine. Exhale, round and push. Let's do one more of those, breathing in. Breathe out. Now for this next one, we're gonna to come to a neutral spine and I wanna show you the difference about what we're, in what we're gonna do. 
arms stay straight. It's not about the spine here. We actually want to keep the spine as still as possible. We're working into our shoulder joint. So when you breathe in, squeeze your shoulder blades together. The chest will drop, but we're not flaring the ribs. The ribs are tucking in. As we exhale, we push with all of our might to lift the upper back up towards the ceiling. Again, we're not tucking the tailbone here. We're keeping a neutral pelvis, neutral spine. Inhale, squeeze. Exhale, push. And don't be afraid of movement. So inhale, true to And as you exhale, push, push, push. I often see students who are just almost afraid to move into their body, afraid to find their full range of motion at the beginning. So exaggerate. Breathe in and push. Let's do three more. Two. Good. And then slowly, again, send your bum back towards your heels. Shake it all out. I want to go through with you what the shape we're looking for in our chaturanga. So eventually, we're looking for elbows at 90 degrees. So from here, reach your arms forward, palms together. Keep your elbows in line with your shoulders. Squeeze your elbows together. Push your fingertips together, all of your might. Push your hands together, your wrist and your elbow and then send your shoulders forward, squeeze for five, four, three, two, one. So this is the action that we're looking for in the shoulder, but now drop your elbows down, hug your side ribs, extend your wrists so your palms are facing forward, draw your shoulders back and down, lift the chest. This is your chaturanga. This is the shape that we're looking for on the floor. It just gets harder when our hands on the ground because we're taking more body weight. But squeeze your side ribs with your elbows for five. Four, pull the shoulders down. Elongate the neck. Two, one. Amazing. So let's put all of this together. If you want to use your bricks, I highly recommend them. They're an amazing guide and they can also act like a support. So have the bricks just a few inches in front of your hands. And then from here, we're going to come into a downward facing dog first. So sending your hips up and back, just having a little moment to sway out. Bend your knees if you need to, and most of us do in some capacity. Point your sit bones high, push from the shoulders again. Rolling your biceps forward, rolling your triceps backwards. Pause here and just feel the shape. Breathe in. Breathe out. And focusing in on our breath in every pose just gives us that level of endurance to stay a little bit longer. It helps us focus the mind. And one more breath. Amazing. From here, we're going to come forward into a plank position, pushing through the shoulders. Drop your knees. Now, when you drop your knees, release your toes so the nails are on the ground. Squeeze your bum, tuck your tailbone, and then slowly start to bend your elbows. Now, don't let your elbows go out. Instead, as you bend your elbows, your shoulders come forward. If you want to rest your shoulders on your bricks just for a second, squeeze your side ribs like we just did a moment ago, and let's push back up. Good, if you need to adjust your bricks so you feel like they're giving you a bit more support, you can do that. So again, we tuck our tailbone as if we're about to do a, cow, a cat pose. We lean forward, that bit's key. Bend your elbows, lift, and let's take it back into child's pose. Good, take a breath. Let's do that a couple more times. Inhale, come forward. Elbows bend. Chest forward, look forward, inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend, hug your side ribs, so hug the elbows in. Inhale, straighten, tuck your toes. And let's get our bricks out of the way here. Unless you want to keep them, you can keep them for the flow. Take it back into downward facing dog. Perfect. Breathing in, breathing out. So today we are doing chaturanga with the knees down because this is a beginner's flow. If you're new to yoga, don't start with knees off the ground unless you've been doing 20 push-ups a day for quite some time. Give yourself a chance to learn the technique, build the strength, and then we'll do more with knees off the floor. So inhale, come to tiptoes, and then tiptoe feet towards the hands. Place your feet down behind your wrists, grabbing opposite elbows, hang heavy. 
Slowly let your head drop, face, arms. And then we drop our hands down to the floor, roll up through the spine. Sweep your hands all the way high. Bring your hands to your heart. Feet can be roughly hip distance apart. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. And then when you're ready, let your hands drop down. And then let's roll up through the spine. Sweeping your hands all the way high to the sky. Bring your hands to your heart. Feet can be roughly hip distance apart or feet together, yogi's choice. When we're ready, we're gonna build the chaturanga into the flow and work on our vinyasa, which I'll explain more in a moment. So breathe in together. Breathe out. Inhale, sweep your hands high. Exhale, forward fold, hands to the floor. Try and look to your tummy. On your inhale, press your hands into shins, push them so you lengthen through the spine, find a flat back. Bending your knees here is perfect. And exhale, we bring our hands down to the floor. Inhale, we step back to plank. Now we drop our knees, squeeze our bum, push our hips forward, gaze forward, release the toes. Elbows bend for chaturanga. If you can't come all the way 90 degrees yet, that's fine. Just come a little bit higher. Let's straighten the arms. Elbows bend. Inhale, straighten. Elbows bend. Now taking it into up dog, straighten your arms. As you pull your hips forward and lift your knees, squeeze your bum. Downward facing dog, exhale. Good, we're here for one. Keep pushing from the shoulders, two, three. On your inhale, right leg lifts high to the sky. As you exhale, bring your right foot forward in between the hands. If you notice that it gets stuck, pick up your right hand, grab hold of your right ankle and place it forward. Amazing, now we're gonna drop our left knee down to the ground. Sweep your arms up. Breathing in, breathing out. Two, three, good. Now from here, we bring our hands back down. Pick up your hips, step your right leg back. We're gonna do our chaturanga again. Knees down, gaze forward, tummy in. Elbows bend, hugging your side body. Let's straighten the arms. Exhale, elbows bend. Now upward facing dog. Hips drop, arms straighten, then bum squeezes, knees lift, downward facing dog, exhale. Breathe in, breathe out. Left leg lifts high. Exhale, bring the leg forward. Again, if it gets stuck, grab hold of it, place it at the top of the mat in line with your hands. Right knee down. Inhale, arms reach up. And this pose is just a nice hip opener through the right. Reminds us to strengthen our bum, push your hips forward. Lift your chest, so a gentle extension through the spine. And then again, hands come down to frame the left leg. We try and lift as high as we can, sending the left leg back, knees down. Release the toes, gaze forward, elbows bend. Straighten arms, elbows bend. Inhale, straighten, last one. Elbows bend. Upward facing dog, breathe in. Downward facing dog, breathe out. Do you reckon that's about 15 minutes? No, because mine says 22, but we restarted. Maybe it's about 17, 18. That's probably enough for a beginner, right? What, this time? Yeah. I think it's good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you, like, finish, like, like, like 15 minutes from here, it will be fine. Yeah. 
I might just like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's probably enough for. Okay. And when you're ready, dropping your knees down to the floor. Well done. That pose can be really tough at the beginning. It comes with time, it comes with practice. But for now, let's just take a moment, resting the back of our hands on our thighs. And I'd recommend just being in a comfortable seat, a seat that you can stay. If you're kneeling, you can always sit on top of a brick. That might make it more comfortable. And then gently press the back of the hands in together. This is always a nice way to decompress. And then slowly on your inhale, sweep your hands high. Clasp your hands behind your back. Open the chest. Try and lift the fist up so you're gently stretching through the front head of the shoulder, opening through the heart. So just a gentle counter to the work that we've done so far. It's always good to stretch out. And then slowly release. Right, arms comes, right arm comes forward, pull it across the body and stretch. And then we switch sides, left arm up, draw it across the body. And then reaching both arms up, grab hold of right elbow with left hand and just gently pull it towards the left so you're stretching through your tricep, through your lats, which do quite a bit of work in your chaturanga. And then we switch. Amazing, and slowly drop your hands, shake it all out. Let's join our hands into prayer. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, release. Breathing in through the nose. Breathing out through the nose. And when you're ready, gently opening your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me, well done. I know the chaturanga can be quite difficult at the beginning, but we also have tutorials on them if you wanna break them down a bit more. I do recommend doing this class a few more times and then you can start to build chaturanga into your longer form flow. I'm Sarah, this is Within Yoga. If you like what we're doing here, please like and subscribe and share what we're doing with your friends who you think could benefit from the practice. It really helps us grow our channel. Thank you so much, see you again soon, namaste.